and I'm Luis Gomez and I'm a postdoctoral associate at Duke University. And today I'll be talk, presenting a uh, result of a collaboration with Moritz Stanhauer in Angle Petrashev's lab. Specifically, we've developed a computational technique for determining how to place and orient TMS coils to improve its targeting and precision. And so in TMS, you have uh, one or more coils and then these coils are placed on the scalp and they're driven by low frequency current pulses. And then uh, these coils generate a magnetic field, which in turn induce an electric field in the conductive brain matter. And then these uh, electric fields in turn modulate brain activity. And we more or less know that regions that are exposed to large electric fields are typically stimulated by TMS. And so we also know that there's a large variability in the outcome of TMS procedures. So there are many sources of variability in TMS, but one important contributor is the placement error in some optimal coil placement on the scalp. Currently in a clinical setting, a commonly adopted placement approach is to use the five centimeter rule, which others have talked about here earlier, and also, or using an EEG coordinate system. Now, these results oftentimes result in the coil not being placed directly under the targeted cortical sites, or there can be operator error, which causes variation in the TMS-induced electric fields. Now, there are more advanced neuronavigated TMS systems that, of course, use MRIs along with cameras to provide uh, much more precise coil placement. And typically, the, the the neuronavigated approaches, what's prescribed is to place the coil directly above the cortical center of mass. This is done because the E-field generated by the coil in a spherical head model is highest directly under it. And experimentally, placing the coil above the targeted cortical site results in a low stimulation threshold relative to placing it elsewhere. Apart from this, the coil is oriented so that it induces an electric field normal to the sulcal walls. Again, this is because it's known to result in a lower stimulation threshold. Now, placing the coil above a targeted cortical site isn't generally a, a good idea, but the optimum coil position and orientation is really driven by the electric field that we want to induce. For example, if we want to maximize the electric field in a, the targeted cortical region of interest, uh, the, the optimum coil position could be as high as 14 millimeters away from this scalp projected position. And so what we have developed here is the auxiliary dipole method or ADM. And ADM enables us to directly determine electric fields induced in the ROI due to many coil placements very rapidly. This in turn enables us to find the optimum coil position and orientation. So in fact, we can determine the electric fields generated uh, at the ROI for 1 million coil positions in under five minutes using a standard laptop computer. Computer. So on the left, I show a head model and a cortical ROI in green and uh, a cyan error, which is the direction along which we want the electric field to point to. And then what the ADM generates is this, this middle heat map where each color represents the average electric field along the direction of the cyan arrow if the coil is placed at that position. In general, the electric field is induced as highest if the coil sits uh, near, to, but not close to that scalp, near to that scalp projected point, but not exactly above it. And here I show some green arrows, and that's the optimum coil orientation for each coil position. So if I put the a coil position in one, uh, if I put the coil in one place in, in this heat map, I'll get that electric field if I orient the coil along those green uh, arrows. And so finally, having these heat maps, it becomes kind of a trivial thing to determine what the optimum coil position is. And I show it here on the right. And we can see that it's not exactly directly above the cortical ROI. It's a little bit off center. OK, so we have a way to, to compute electric fields very rapidly, but what should we optimize? And so, uh, to answer this question, I'm going to borrow some research done by my colleagues, Amana Vera and Boshua Wang. And so what they did is to better understand the biophysical workings of TMS and determine electric field parameters that best predict stimulations, they developed a multi-scale model. 
And the multi-scale model consists of standard head meshes that are used for FEM. And in these head meshes, uh, inside the cortex of these head meshes, realistic representations of neural models are embedded in the cortical layers. And so again, the, these realistic morphologies were embedded into the cortex and then placed inside, uh, yeah, embedded into the cortex. And then they ran an electric field simulation in SIDNIPS. They got the electric field results. And then they coupled these uh, electric fields with the, with the realistic neurons uh, to model their dynamics. And then what they were able to come up with was with stimulation current thresholds or the, or the amount of current needed to activate these individual neurons. And so what they observed was that macroscopically, what they found was that over the whole neuron population, the activation threshold was best correlated with the electric field magnitude. This indicates that we should maximize the electric field magnitude in the tartical re cortical region of interest. Not only did they notice this, but they found that different neuron types have preferential directions resulting in lower activation thresholds. So in some instances where specific neural populations are being targeted, the electric field along a given direction should be maximized. And so just to reiterate, we should maximize the electric field magnitude or the electric field magnitude along a given direction in the, R, in the re cortical region of interest that we want to target. Now I will describe the auxiliary dipole method or ADM, which we have developed to rapidly compute these two quantities. And so uh, in a typical TMS scenario, we have a coil which generates an electric field inside the head. And you can determine the electric field everywhere in the cortex by, for example, using SIBNIPS. The reciprocal scenario to TMS is MEG, where you have a source inside the cortex, and this source generates an electric field that's picked up by an MEG coil. Uh, and we can also run a simulation for MEG where the source sits inside and determine the electric fields generating everywhere outside of the head. Uh, so reciprocity links these two scenarios, the MEG one and the TMS one, and it specifically allows us to determine the electric field at a single position in the brain that is generated for all possible coil placements. And in fact, many boundary element method simulation methods for uh, MEG are currently used to model TMS by using reciprocity. Now, unlike these methods, uh, ADM uses a different set of equations, which enables the incorporation of anisotropic brain meshes. And we use fast algorithms, which enables the, us to use high resolution method, meshes. I'm not gonna go into those details here, but we've just published a preprint in BioArchive yesterday and it should be up by now in case you're interested in those. So how do we determine the electric field generated in the ROI? So we, we, we simply chose a specific, a specific MEG current source, as is given here. And when we plug that into the reciprocity, what we get is the average electric field uh, generated in the ROI are along a given direction. And so, uh, so, so, so far I told you that we can generate the, elect the average electric field along a given direction in an ROI. But like I said earlier, we're also interested in electric field magnitude. And so as it turns out, as it turns out, for many ROIs are typically small and the electric field direction in the ROIs does not vary by much. And so as it turns out, these electric fields can be approximated as unidirectional. So here I show a four centimeter ROI and I show a, a, a preferential electric field direction along the blue arrow. And we can see that the individual electric fields are pointing approximately parallel to this, uh, to this blue arrow. And so as a result, we can use our reciprocity approach three times to create an, a unidirectional estimate of the electric, average electric field in the ROI. And these estimates give us errors that are, errors that are less than 2% for ROIs that are less than two centimeters in diameter, which is, 
which en en encapsulates the size of most practical regions of interest that we want to stimulate with TMS. Okay, so we can use reciprocity to rapidly compute electric fields along a given direction or the electric field magnitude. And so to further speed up the computation, we introduced these auxiliary dipoles. So we take the coil model and replace it with an auxiliary dipole model that enables us to use the same dipole locations for all coil orientations. Now this sounds like a minor detail, but it enables us to look at 360 coil orientations at the same cost as running a single simulation. On the right, I show an, a plot of the accuracy of this method or how closely does it converge to the original coil model. And we can get as high an accuracy as we want by just simply increasing the coil models. Okay, so I know, I know there's a lot of technical details here, but the main point is that, before, that we can compute electric fields very rapidly. And this, of course, enables us to generate these heat maps that I show here. So let's look at some results. So how rapidly can we do this? So we ran the SIDNIPS coil placement optimization model and the uh, ADM in a high performance computing node. SIDNIPS took seven to 10 seconds per coil placement using their faster set setting using leveraging our diesel direct solver. The ADM took less than eight minutes independent of number of simulations. Note, these are electric field magnitude estimates, so we had to run the ADM three times, meaning that we're, if we're interested in the electric field along a single direction, these times would be decreased by a factor of three, or they would be one third what they are now. And even with all this, if we look at 10,000 coil configurations or coil placements, ADM is already 165 times faster than running the direct finite element method. On the right, I show results with increasing number of coil configurations. And here we can run 1 million coil configurations in under 15 minutes using a laptop. And five minutes if we just want the electric field along a given direction, which is the number that I gave earlier. And so now we look at the accuracy. So is, it, is, this, is this really accurate? And the answer is yes. So we considered a spherical ROI in a sphere head model. And uh, we want to compute the electric field along the horizontal direction. And we evaluate the electric field for coils positions corresponding to the coil being centered at each of the red dots shown here on this figure. Now we did four coil orientations it's aligned with the, uh, with the uh, desired electric field direction and that 45 degrees off, 90 degrees off and 135 degrees off. And what we observe is what we would expect to observe from the analytic electric field is that the field is higher if you place the coil directly above the region of interest and it becomes weaker if you place the coil away from above the region of interest. And you can see that if you misalign the coil, you get a weaker electric field. Uh, but so the top shows the analytical results and the bottom in the bottom rows, we show the percent error by using the direct FEM, reciprocity and ADM. And what we observe is that, that all of these methods give you an error that's less than 0.43%. And uh, of course, the direct and the reciprocity give you a lower error. And this is because we added a, a, an, another layer of approximation in the ADM by introducing these axillary dipoles. But we also gained there because we're able to uh, rotate the get, generate all coil rotations very rapidly. And not only that, we're getting 0.43% error, which is suitable or quite low. So now we, look, we looked at a, a more realistic example. So we looked at the Ernie head model that's uh, given in, in SIDNIPS. And uh, again, we, we looked at the electric field along a given direction. And, uh, and we looked at electric fields on all the red dots as shown in the figure. And so when we plot the electric field results uh, here, we plot the direct results and when we do the comparisons for accuracy we're comparing with direct results so we're not looking at absolute accuracy but we're looking at how much does this match the direct FEM results and if you look at the reciprocity the arrow and, and the auxiliary dipole methods the errors are below 0.1 percent uh, it turns out that for reciprocity it's actually 0.001 percent accurate with the FEM meaning that it's virtually identical to the FEM solution with the auxiliary dipole, we get a slightly higher error, and that this is again because we introduced these auxiliary dipoles. 
but the error is well below 1%. And so it gives a very good accuracy and we're getting significant gains in speed up. Okay, so we further consider four head models and, uh, and we considered a, a coil placement comparison. And so for each of these head models, the way we uh, place the coil is we, uh, these, these come from experiments, ex experiments in the lab done by my other colleagues. And what they did is they measured the head thickness and then they placed the, the coil in the simulation accounting for that head thickness. So uh, this way they can get a better estimate of the dose. And so here we considered these four head models that we got from them, which account for the hair thickness. And we computed the electric field magnitude, it, average electric field magnitude generated in the ROI for a variety of ROI sizes, starting from one millimeter ROI size, to then 10 millimeter ROI size, to 20 millimeter ROI size, to 40 millimeter ROI size. And what we observe is that, of course, this unidirectional approximation becomes less and less accurate as we increase the ROI diameter. But for ROIs that are less than 20 millimeters in size or in diameter, we get that the error is below 2%, meaning that we can get a very good estimate of the electric field magnitude. Now, of course, okay, so we can get a very good dose, but the question is if we op optimize this proxy metric or this approximation of the electric field magnitude, do we actually converge to the correct optimum uh, electric field or, or coil placement? And the answer is again, yes. So here we look at coil placement optimization results using, uh, obtained using SIBNIFs versus the ones obtained using the ADM. For the most part, the optimization results obtained with SIBNIFs and ADM are close to one another. Furthermore, the scalp projected center of Mars mass is far from the actual coil placement optimum. And in, this, in the next slide, we quantify how different these methods are. And so on the top row, we consider the electric field dose. And so the first two columns compare the SIBNIFs optimization and the scalp projected point and the scalp projected point and the ADM. And what we observe is that uh, the ADM generates an electric field dose that's up to 3% lower than using the scalp projected point. And then on the third column, we compare the SIBNIPS optimum to the ADM optimum. And what we get is that the electric field dose is virtually identical. Now on the bottom row, we show the distance between optimum coil positions. Again, we see that the scalp projected point can be up to 1.4 centimeters away from the optimum coil placement. The two optimized coil placements are close to one another, and we see that on the third row where almost everything sits at zero. There's one point at 1.1 millimeter, and then there's two points that sit around three millimeters away from each other. So most of the optimizations yielded the same coil position. Uh, that that being said, some of them did not, but when we actually looked at the dose, they generate the same dose, which means that these two were probably non-unique optimums. Okay, so just to reiterate, the ADM results in the same electric field dose as direct optimization. Scalp projected points can be up to 1.4 centimeters off the optimum uh, position. But of course, great, we have a way to place the coil, but the fact is that uh, coil placement protocols have limited precision associated with them. So for example, a practitioner uh, placing the coil on the scalp could have placement error as high as 1.5% uh, 1.5 centimeters. And even using neuro navigated protocols, one could have errors as large as five millimeters in coil placements. Because, so because ADM can compute these electric fields so rapidly in the ROI at many coil positions and orientations, it can be used to calculate uncertainty in the electric field dose, resulting from these uncertainties in coil placements. So for example, here we modeled the uh, uncertainty in coil placement protocol by a patch on the scalp, and the coil can be centered at a different position on this green patch in each realization of a coil uh, placement protocol. And the radius of the patch, of course, uh, is determined by the type of procedure that you're using. If you're using a standard placement procedure, you would have a radius between one to 1.5 centimeters. And if you're using a neuro-navigated uh, TMS approach, it would be between two to five millimeters. 
And so what we can actually do is just take the heat maps resulting from the uh, ADM, and then we can take uh, map probability density functions for the coil position due to each placement protocol. And we can take uh, probability density functions for the coil orientation. So here I marked the, co the, the, ex the mean coil orientation as the white arrow and then a wedge signifying that the, there's uh, an uncertainty associated with this coil orientation. And on the left hand side plots, I show these uh, Gaussians on the surface of the head. Or these could be also uniform functions, which are the results that I will show you today. But basically what this, this heat map these three heat maps represent is the probability that a coil will be positioned at that given place, uh, given a certain protocol. And so we can take these probability density functions, and what we can come up with is with uh, the expected value of the electric field, given these coil positioning uncertainties, and its standard deviation. And we can do this very rapidly because we've been able to compute these heat maps of the electric fields generated using the ADM. So let's, let's, let's uh, look at an example. So here I have a one centimeter diameter cortical ROI, and I'm interested on the E-field along the cyan arrow direction. I assume three different levels of uncertainty, 2.5 indicated by the orange circle, five indicated by the black circle, and 10 millimeters uncertainty indicated by the purple circle. For each coil position indicated in red, I can compute the expected values of the electric field and its standard deviation. So here we see that uh, from left to right, we see increasing uncertainty increases the uh, uncertainty in the uh, electric field. So we see an increase in the standard deviation maximum. We also see that the standard deviation is less uh, near the center of the coil or where the expected value of the electric field is highest, meaning that if we place the coil in a region where the expected value is highest, we're also partially hedging for these coil error effects, meaning that we also get less uncertainty in the uh, coil, uh, in the electric field dose. And then on the right, I show the expected value of the ROIE field. Now, what we see is that as we increase uncertainty, this yellow hotspot gets smaller and smaller, meaning that as the uncertainty in the coil position is highest, it becomes more and more critical to identify the optimum coil placement or the coil placement where the electric field is uh, highest because if you center your probability density function of where you place the coil off the optimum, uh, you will get decreased efficacy. You will, you're, you will get significantly more decreased efficacy if you have a less accurate coil placement protocol. And not only that, you get increased uncertainty because we also see that the uncertainty kind of increases as we move out of the center of the coil, uh, 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 as we move away from directly over the ROI. And so here I show uh, confidence intervals for the electric field as a function of coil position uncertainty on the first five graphs. And on the sixth graph, I show coil orientation uncertainty. So on the, on the first graph, on the top left column, uh, that's the optimum coil placement. And what we see is that the uncertainty increases, of course, as in the electric field increases as we have less certainty in the uh, coil placement. But what's also interesting, so all these other points are five centimeters off of that optimum position. And one is to the left, one's up, the other one is to the right, and the other one's down. But what we see with all of these that are five millimeters off is that the uncertainty associated for any get uh, in the electric field dose associated with any given level of coil position uncertainty is near, it, it increases, meaning that, uh, so when you identify uh, optimum coil position, you not only maximize the field dose, but you also minimize a little bit the variability that you are expected to observe given that you have a, a coil a positioning uncertainty. And then what we also noticed is that uh, coil orientation is, second, is secondary with respect to coil placement. So it's, it, it doesn't contribute as much to uncertainty as coil placement. And so using this uh, reciprocity along with iso, iso, auxiliary dipoles, we can evaluate the electric field induced in the ROI due to many coil positions rapidly. 
Having these E-field maps enables rapid extraction of optimum coil configuration. Furthermore, these E-field maps can be used to quantify uncertainty in the E-field loops, resulting from coil placement errors. And we found that coil position is more important contributor to uncertainty than coil orientation. Uh, all of these codes are available for download. Uh, we're still working on the, the uh, supporting documentation, but most of the functions that I showed you today are uh, currently documented. And so thank you very much. Thank you, Luis, for the talk. Uh, we have a few questions about um, the modeling. First, um, when you did TMS modeling in SIMNIPS, did you use NIFTY or SSD coil definitions uh, for the SIMNIPS timing on the HPC? So we use the actual dipole models. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. No, for the, for the SIMNIPS, we use the, for the optimization, we use the NIFTY, which is faster. Okay. So we use basically their fastest setting. Mm -hmm. when, when we were doing the accuracy studies, we used the dipole models. Okay, thank you. And uh, the second question about your methods, about ADM. Uh, with this method, do you obtain the electric fields everywhere or just in the field uh, of region, in, or just in the region of interest? Yeah, so, so I mean, there's no free lunch here. <laughs> If that's kind of the question, but we do give you the main course, which is the electric field and the ROI. Uh, so yeah, so so the way that we gain computational efficiency is through only computing the electric field in the ROI. Uh, so you can think about it one way. You can either have a single coil position and all the electric field information, or you can have a little bit of the electric field information and all coil positions. That's kind of the trade-off, I guess. <laughs> 